Kevin from Beamsley International. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining today's meeting, today's webinar on uh, Beam Enterprise Asset and Maintenance Management System for Acumetica. And um, today we have a, a panel of uh, speakers and uh, we'll be showing you Beam in association with Acumetica. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to thank uh, Acumetica uh, and Acumetica South Africa for this opportunity. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharon, much appreciated. And our friends in, in Acumetica, thank you. Uh, so um, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be starting uh, with a brief uh, company uh, uh, introduction, uh, and then uh, we'll get into the Beam. So Beam is a, a pretty exciting uh, software that is complementing Acumetica for plan maintenance and asset uh, management uh, uh, maintenance focus uh, solution. And uh, also uh, during the webinar, if you can keep your microphones muted, uh, that'd be great. So we can have a pretty good um, voice quality during the webinar. And what we're gonna do is that if you have any questions, please type your questions in the chat box and we'll be addressing your questions during the Q&A session at the end of our webinar. So we have, uh, uh, we have time, we schedule time for uh, addressing questions of yours. And of course, uh, we'll be also sharing our uh, contact information in following slide, so that if you'd like to continue the conversation, we'll be happy to be in touch uh, with you. So I think uh, everyone is connected, looks like. So what I'm doing is, let me see. If you can uh, mute your microphone, that'd be great, please. So let's see. I think we can get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Kevin Levejoglu. Uh, I am the managing director of Beam3 International. I am based in New York with uh, Beam3 International. Today with me, uh, there is Sam uh, Watt. He is our uh, process software engineer. He is also with us today. And he'll be showing you uh, Beam. Uh, in association with Acumetica. And we also have our uh, product uh, manager, uh, Hakan Aydoğdu with us. Uh, he is connecting from Istanbul and uh, he'll be helping us while we are addressing uh, questions. So we can, I think, get started. So we are uh, being through international. Uh, we are an enterprise software maker since 1998. We are based in New York. So in a sense, uh, we believe in the simplicity of uh, we believe in the power of simplicity and digital transformation. So we help companies simplify uh, their uh, processes. That's how we design our uh, products. Um, we are an Acumetica independent software uh, vendor. And uh, we are a group of companies, our software uh, development center and our Global headquarters is in Istanbul metro area, where the yellow dot is. We have another company in Europe called Beamster Europe for, for our European operations. Us, Beamster International, is based in New York. So uh, as a group, we are about 160 people. Uh, we are a growing organization. Also, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development is in our board, board. So with their help and support, we have more visibility in international markets. Uh, just so you know, uh, BIMSER is ISO 9001 certified and ISO 271 certified. So uh, we have been uh, sponsoring various Acumetica events. Proudly, we have very good uh, friendships and uh, contacts in uh, Acumetica and in Acumetica ecosystem. Uh, so we have uh, sponsored Acumetica Summit in Houston earlier this year uh, in uh, in Texas. Also, we sponsored Acumetica Summit in South Africa. Um, we have also uh, sponsored Boston uh, Roadshow last year also uh, with Acumetica as well. We are uh, very fond of Acumetica. Uh, we like uh, to, we love to be in Acumetica ecosystem. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we have great relationships with Acumetica and Acumetica wars and ecosystem basically. So we'll be investing more and more uh, in Acumetica uh, uh, relationship in uh, coming months. That's that's our objective, basically. So, as I mentioned, we have been developing software products since 1998, and we have been very focused since 1998. We focus only these products that you see on the screen right now. 
uh, we have EBA for uh, business automate, automate pro, business automation process uh, management. We have BEAM for enterprise asset and maintenance management that we'll talk more about today. BEAM is Acumetic Certified Solution. Uh, we have QDMS for quality, risk, and compliance management. That is also a certified solution. Uh, we have Ensemble as a business process management tool. Uh, in addition, we have uh, EBA contract manager solution. That's an Acumetic ecosystem, but it's in the process of uh, certification at the moment. Uh, we have EBA ITSM solution as well. That's actually uh, a solution built on EBA platform. So here you can see how we uh, position our uh, products. Ensemble is more of a managerial tool. Uh, EBA is a business process automation. So the platform uh, being for the maintenance and asset management, QDMS for the quality management, they automate processes. So all of our products, they work uh, standalone, they integrate with each other, and they integrate with various systems. So right now we focus on Acumetica integration and how we uh, offer benefit to Acumetica clients and Acumetica OS, basically. You can see here on the screen how many implementations we have done by the end of last year. And these figures uh, are actually, of course, changed this year, we have more. Uh, but just so you know, we've been uh, active since uh, 1998, so we have deployed uh, uh, many different uh, projects, and we have many clients globally, as you see on the screen. Here you can see some of our clients. Uh, these are reputable references that we have. Uh, we've been working with uh, mid-sized companies as well as enterprise-level uh, companies uh, as well. So uh, we work with United Nations, we work with AstraZeneca in pharmaceutical industry, in banking industry, we have also Societe Generale. We work with Ford and Listen Alliance in Middle East and Europe, uh, as to mention some of our references. We have more references available on our website. So speaking of uh, South Africa, also we have clients in South Africa. Bridgestone is using our uh, products in uh, South Africa, as we know. AstraZeneca in pharmaceutical industry also one of our clients. Uh, DeFi is a, uh, uh, is a uh, 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 wide good appliances uh, manufacturer in, in South Africa. They are using our uh, quality management system to comply with ISO uh, management standards. So we have, we have been active in South Africa and uh, we are uh, investing more time in South African market. So I'm glad that we are also active with, with Acumetica in South Africa so that we'll be closer and closer to South African mar market. We are, we are looking forward to it and we are happy to be active in South Africa. Uh, so uh, let's get started with the BEAM, our Enterprise Asset and Maintenance Management System. That's a certified solution by Acumetica, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, it uh, is actually very complementary to Acumetica and we we'll also present it to you uh, on the slides and also in uh, live as well. Uh, BEAM as an enterprise asset and maintenance management system has been uh, has uh, be, has been uh, actually offered and right now being used in various uh, verticals. Manufacturing is one of them, as a plant maintenance management system. Mining is uh, also a very uh, active uh, industry that actually being is BEAM is being used. Equipment and mach machinery industry is in manufacturing machinery or equipment or uh, giving service to uh, various projects with the help of uh, equipment, also something that BIM is actually uh, been, uh, being used uh, in. Uh, transportation, logistic industry, aviation for um, maintenance of planes or maintenance of facilities with regards to airlines, for instance, are also ideal verticals for BIM. Also, we have uh, references. Construction industries um, and also ideal vertical for BIM. Uh, since the construction industry, they have a lot of equipment, uh, machinery and facility that they need to manage and maintain. Energy, oil and gas industry is very active. Uh, fleet management, healthcare and pharma industry is also very active in terms of managing the uh, healthcare devices, uh, manufacturing activities, as well as compliance purposes. As we all know, healthcare and pharmaceutical industries are heavily regulated and uh, many activities needs to be controlled and documented. So BEAM is also an ideal solution for this purpose as well. Um, in addition to those, uh, we have also uh, facility management industry uh, and hospitality industry, as in hotels, resorts, and uh, and uh, basically property management 
So just to give you an idea what kind of industries BIM can be used in addition to manufacturing. Um, we have a lot of references in various industries. Uh, we work with, for instance, um, uh, Hanko International Paper. Also, they are using uh, BIM in paper manufacturing. KFC is a restaurant chain. They are using BIM. Uh, we have uh, Starbucks, for instance, that's a pretty interesting um, uh, customers of, customer of ours, and they are using BIM uh, continuously to manage the maintenance of their coffee machines. Uh, we work with, uh, for instance, Turkish Airlines, Unilever as a manufacturing company. Uh, so since BIM is uh, multi-location, multi-language, and multi-currency, we also have other uh, references in various countries. For instance, we have a Gulsa construction in Kenya as a reference in Africa, for instance. We have uh, Mekial construction in Algeria. Uh, they are also using BIM for the construction operations. And we also have reference in China, for instance, they are using BIM in, in Chinese, uh, thanks to uh, multi-language capabilities of BIM. And we also have reference in Azerbaijan, Brazil, Russia, and, and also Qatar, as you can see on the, on the screen. Uh, so uh, I like to also talk about a little bit of uh, mining and equipment uh, industry. Uh, so uh, we also have reference in mining industry, uh, currently actively actively using BIM. Uh, for instance, uh, AT Aluminium is uh, one of our clients. They are using uh, BIM to manage the maintenance of their facilities and equipment and machinery while they are mining. Uh, we also have equipment and machinery manufacturers and service and service providers as well as some of our references. Putzmeister is one of them, for instance. They are equipment manufacturers. They are uh, selling leasing and providing service to uh, mining, concrete, and energy industry. So they are using BIM for those purposes as well in terms of managing the machinery equipment, uh, maintenance operations, and, uh, and plant hire. Uh, also, we have, for instance, CAT of Turkey. Uh, they are using BIM uh, to provide service to uh, various organizations uh, for their um, construction, mining, and other activities. Uh, and they are using BIM for plant hire for projects and also for maintenance purposes. Um, so let's talk about BIM a little bit further. Uh, BIM is a modular uh, uh, software. It has capabilities to integrate with various systems. Um, uh, so right now it's already integrated with Acumatica. In addition to that, it can also integrate with any manufacturing execution system, could be a GPS system, RFID, barcode, QR, SCADA to any machinery, for instance, are common integrations that we have done in various organizations. Uh, it has a workflow management system underneath, so any operation in terms of creating uh, work orders, for instance, uh, assigning tasks, tasks can be uh, subject to a workflow management based on any company's hierarchy. So that is a pretty uh, important uh, uh, benefit, having the control of the operations for uh, for the client, for the users of, of BIM. Uh, so there are basically uh, two types of users in BIM. Uh, there are admins, there are requesters, and there are regular users. Um, and uh, the good thing about BIM is that as an asset and maintenance management system, it has more than 10,000 ready-made reports in the system. So that, uh, so the high management easily can uh, follow up the uh, KPIs in terms of performance uh, tracking and management. And, uh, and reports are available visually and also in regular format as well. So the good thing is that in terms of benefits, uh, since we have deployed BIM more than 300 times and we've been doing it for, for, for more than uh, 20 years now, uh, the reports that we got our clients is that once they, they deploy BIM, they managed to reduce the maintenance cost 15 to 20%. And they managed to, managed to reduce uh, failures in their machinery and equipment uh, 40 to 80 percent. So that's a great saving if you think about it in an organization because uh, maintenance at the end of the day is a cost and we like to reduce it and BIM is here to help in association with Acumatica. So let's look at it from this way in terms of reducing uh, maintenance costs and increasing efficiency and also compliance, especially heavily regulated uh, industries. So let's continue with our presentation. As I mentioned, uh, BIM is a, a modular system. So uh, it has uh, asset management uh, module, it has inventory management module, it has, it has maintenance management and personal management module. This is basically the core system. Uh, if any company would like to manage any 
uh, maintenance operation. In addition to those, we have purchasing management uh, module, we have service management module, and also we have also autonomous maintenance module as well in the in the system. So when we talk about maintenance, I have to mention that we are talking about periodic, preventive, and predictive maintenance. So uh, you can uh, plan uh, your uh, maintenance operation, so you can have regular scheduled uh, maintenance. Uh, also, you can also conduct predictive uh, maintenance. And also, if you have, uh, if you like to also manage your uh, machinery and equipment with a predictive way of maintenance, BIM has also that foundation, that in that uh, that uh, that um, infrastructure for you to manage it. So that's also important. So the idea is that having no or the minimum number of unplanned breakdowns, because once there is a breakdown, you're in trouble. Simple, you cannot operate, you cannot fulfill your uh, your promises to your clients, and you will have basically difficulty delivering your promises. So uh, the main idea is that having periodic, uh, preventive, and predictive maintenance management operations in place so that you can manage your maintenance operations in order to reduce and minimize, or if possible, basically eliminate unplanned breakdowns to reduce maintenance costs, to increase efficiency and also to comply with various rules and regulations in any industry that you're active with. So this is basically the philosophy that's basically the you know, foundational goal that actually we uh, put BEAM in place in any uh, any organization. Um, uh, BEAM is uh, actually ready to work with any other system in any organization. Uh, typically a manufacturing execution system, if we are talking about a manufacturing uh, organization is a typical integration that we do so that any failure notice any failures uh, uh, development happening in the in the in the manufacturing operations we can pick it up and start the maintenance management uh, operation automatically so we try to automate the process as much as uh, we can in addition to those if we are talking about an operational uh, organization say an equipment or manufacturing um, uh, services, for instance, uh, if there is any uh, software in those mach or, or in those machinery or equipment, for instance, or vehicle, you can also pick up the signal and help uh, the company manage the schedule and manage the maintenance operation. Right now, we are already integrated with Acumatica, so we can easily pull and push asset-related machinery and equipment-related information both ways. You can also pull the inventory management information uh, from Acumatica. So please keep in mind that in BEAM, we are talking about spare parts inventory management. This is not a regular generic inventory management. So typically you are keeping your inventory in Acumatica, right? So what we are pulling is that we are pulling the spare part information from Acumatica. So we have you pull that information from Acumatica, now you have it, and then you can basically schedule your uh, maintenance operations Please keep in mind that just like a manufacturing operation, a maintenance operation has three legs, okay? Man, machine, and material. This is a pretty uh, uh, generic rule. So in, on this rule, we basically run BEAM. So you can schedule your machinery as, as asset. You can schedule your uh, man, your, meaning your maintenance uh, crew. And you can schedule your material as in spare parts. Just like you see on the screen right now, we get the spare parts from Acumatica seamlessly with the current integration of ours. Uh, so uh, when we talk about asset management, we are talking about machine, equipment, uh, or vehicle management, for instance. Right now, you may be managing that information. I have no doubt. It can be on paper, can be on Excel sheets, on in various forms. The idea is that you basically put everything together regarding any machine or any any equipment that you have at your organization. You may have 10 machine, you may have 1,000 machine, you, have, you may have 10,000 different assets in your system. So the more uh, number of, the higher number of uh, assets, machinery or equipment you have, uh, it becomes more vital, more essential, more important to manage the assets in one location. So that's what BIM is for basically. So with the help of BIM, uh, you can, uh, design your asset tree as in facility, host center, location, and there is no limit for the uh, level of uh, asset tree. The limit is infinity. There is none. So that is something you know good to good to have in BIM. So you can design your your asset uh, asset tree basically based on your current operation with no limitation, and we'll be 
of course, uh, happy to help you in this in this process. Um, you can add the equipment related information such as uh, contracts, manuals, um, also inspections, for instance. A typical example also will be insurance, for instance, for each uh, equipment or machinery you may have. The source system can remind you the warranties. And when we are talking about warranties, the warranty may come from the original uh, machinery or asset providers. Also, it may also come from, for instance, a service providers. They can also they can all be entered in Beam's asset management system, and it can remind you what is coming. Uh, so that when the time comes, you can of course pull up the contract from Beam, uh, and you can even see the details when needed. So everything is in one place, nicely organized for your uh, for your access. Also, uh, you can enter uh, information such as uh, which team member of yours will be in, in charge of uh, any machinery and equipment. What kind of material, spare parts, should be used for that machinery, for instance. So you can lock in all the spare parts that needs to be used for certain machinery or equipment. So there will be no misunderstanding or misuse of spare parts. So everything will be locked in and scheduled uh, much earlier than, than needed. So, it makes things much easier, especially if you're automating your, your maintenance uh, management process with the help of team, scheduling these information is uh, very helpful. Um, also, you can manage the efficiency of uh, assets and machinery. You can uh, schedule a certain, for instance, um, operations also in, in Beam, and you can also enter what, it, what was actually planned and what was, what is it, what is actually, what really, actually happened in the system so you can see the performance as well of any machinery or, or equipment that you have. Uh, system works with, as I mentioned earlier, with an RFID integration and a barcode integration so you can simply uh, keep track of your machinery. Um, the, good, the good thing is uh, Beam has uh, visual tools and what you see right now is uh, actually a blueprint of a, of a manufacturing organization so any, any blueprint that's available uh, we can actually pinpoint the machinery that is available in the system in the in the organization, and you can see in a live manner which machinery is actually in in progress, in you know working active, and which ones are actually under production. So whichever is in red, for instance, that means that particular machinery is under maintenance. That's what it means. So without seeing any reports, without making any phone calls to anybody, you can see it on the screen on your screen live what is happening. Um, please keep in mind that Beam is good to manage any fixed asset in terms of machinery or equipment. Also, any vehicle, trucks, uh, any you know, moving assets also can be tracked in Beam as well. So uh, just so you know. Uh, the reason being, we have a GPS integration capability. Also, we have the uh, Google Map available on, in Beam. So you can see your you know, fixed assets as well as your, your moving vehicles or, or moving assets as well. Uh, in terms of maintenance management, when we look at the maintenance management module of Beam, uh, you can uh, schedule your uh, work orders uh, and also your uh, colleagues, your team members, either in a manufacturing organization on manufacturing floor or if they are, for instance, uh, uh, operating a, a vehicle, uh, they can request for, for maintenance for that particular machinery or equipment. As I mentioned earlier, we are talking about uh, preventive, predictive, and periodic maintenance in addition to corrective maintenance. And uh, while we put the rules in place in Beam, you can automate automate your maintenance operations. Uh, there is also uh, a way to manage the calibration of each machinery and equipment. Also, you can manage the um, uh, shutdown scheduling and service management. When I say service management, management what I mean is that in your company, you may have in-house crew for maintenance, say mechanical maintenance, electronic maintenance, or software maintenance, for instance. Uh, however, typically all the companies, you know, uh, sooner or later they get services from outside. Could be a you know subcontractor, could be a painter, could be a service provider of for a certain machinery, for instance. So every time that you get a service from outside, you can also enter the cost. Uh, in the system, in the work order, and you can actually generate reports simply to see which asset actually um, costing you how much in terms of maintenance and the frequency. And you can make the analysis. That's the good thing about it. So you can make decisions. Uh, so, yes. So uh, we also have spare part uh, maintenance management. Uh, as I mentioned, this information is heavily coming from 
Sorry. Heavily coming yeah. from uh, Alchemetica. Where? And for your and, space. No, no, it's for to sell to people. And also the uh, uh, the uh, then also you can manage your uh, multiple warehouses. For instance, if you have multiple locations and multiple warehouses, uh, you can manage. You can see different warehouses to see what kind of spare part is available, which the information is coming from Alchemetica, and you can see live. Uh, what is available and how you can basically manage it. Um, and uh, it has, this module also has a minimum and maximum level management. So if you like to have, uh, if you like to, if you set the minimum and maximum level for any item, spare part, uh, system can also remind you. So the idea here is to have the optimum level of uh, spare part inventory. You don't want to have too much because your money is sitting there. It's costly, it's risky, and you don't want to have less because if there is any maintenance. Uh, needed, you like to have the piece, uh, pay part on hand, so you can manage it accordingly, uh, accordingly based on your 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 business's needs, um, and uh, you can always generate reports in the system. Uh, personal management, maintenance management, uh, crew management is also available in the personal management module, so you can schedule uh, staff members. Uh, team members uh, for the maintenance, uh, who's going to be maintaining uh, what machinery, what equipment, and you can also manage the you know skill of uh, each uh, team member in the maintenance uh, team. You can manage the shift, and right now you are seeing the screenshot of, for instance, the calendar. So in on what day, who is in charge of doing what, you can also schedule it, and you can also manage the shift basically. So uh, with the help of these. Um, uh, uh, is uh, scheduling, uh, you can see what is coming next before it happens, so it makes things easier when you are managing your maintenance operations. Uh, so the, uh, one of the modules that we have is uh, for uh, project management. So sometimes what you can do is that you may have excess number of uh, assets, or sometimes you maybe rent out your asset. A typical example would be renting out construction equipment, for instance. Or if you are in mining industry, for instance, you may be actually giving service to certain organizations with your uh, vehicle or equipment. So you can schedule it uh, with the help of BIM in this module, and uh, you can schedule the, um, the the machinery or equipment to give this service outside. And you can also enter the, the, the price of it. And if you are giving service outside with the help of your uh, your uh, current um, machinery, you can also uh, do the calculations in this system. Another example would be if you are, let's say, running a hotel chain, for instance. You enter all your uh, hotel units in the system as uh, uh, in the in the asset tree, and every time that you are maintaining, an, you know, for instance, a, a hotel room, uh, you can manage the uh, maintenance operations in the system. And if you like to also manage the calls, for instance. Uh, in the hotel, for instance, when you call as a guest to, uh, for instance, housekeeping, you can manage also the call management in this module. So uh, there's uh, these, these modules designed for you to utilize your current assets uh, for service management or, or plant hire, for instance. And you can manage the maintenance uh, and uh, outside services when you are giving service outside with the help of your, your assets in the system. Um, there is mobile app available of Beam, so you can uh, scan a barcode, you can scan a QR code, for instance. You can request a work uh, request with the help of uh, the mobile app. Mobile is available on Android or iOS devices, either on mobile phones or tablets, for instance. You can take pictures and upload it when you are requesting for for uh, for a work request. Also, you can pull up the calendars. Uh, for maintenance purposes, you can schedule. And if you are a, a member of a maintenance management crew, you can pull up the checklist in terms of doing any certain maintenance, for instance. You know, what kind of flow that you need to follow when you are doing the maintenance, you can also use the mobile app for that purpose as well. As I mentioned earlier, Archimetica uh, certified a Beam uh, with the integration and, and its um, capabilities. Uh, this screenshot is uh, coming from the Alchemetica's extension page that Beam is available at the moment, so you can also see the details and videos as well. Uh, yes, so I'm getting also questions. That's great. So please keep writing me questions, and we'll be addressing all these questions, and we'll show you at the uh, end of 
our demonstration in our Q&A session. I believe some of the answers you'll get it uh, during our uh, demonstration as well, but please uh, type your questions in chat box. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so here is the foundational integration uh, uh, model that we have. So keep in mind that this is a foundational integration, meaning we have uh, put this together uh, to have the integration in place with Acumetica, and we are ready to expand this integration in any way uh, possible based on your project uh, at no additional cost. So, uh, you know, just so you know, that's what we have at the moment, and we are ready to expand it if there is a need. So you only do the integrations on only you know uh, need basis. If there's a need, we can do the integration. Not a problem. Acumetica is cloud-based. It's a beautiful system. We love working with Acumetica. Beam is also cloud-based, uh, and we have seamless integration with Acumetica. These systems are perfect for each other, technically, and uh, we can do integrations if needed. Right now, we have uh, assets are integrated. We have spare parts are integrated, and um, and also, um, uh, uh, yeah, these information basically works both ways. And we can, as I mentioned, further this integration anytime uh, based on your projects. We are, we are more than ready to, to make it happen for you. Um, so that is my part, basically. Uh, so I talk about uh, Beam Tree International. I presented to our company about who we are and what we do. And I also presented you Beam, our uh, enterprise asset and maintenance management system. So that's an independent system that works uh, actually independently. However, we have this uh, great partnership with Acumetica and we integrated with Acumetica. And you, I uh, was also trying to uh, present you in terms of uh, how Beam is working with Acumetica seamlessly as well. So what I like to do is that I like to hand the microphone to Sam Watt. Uh, he's our precious software engineer. And Sam will be uh, presenting you Beam, as well as uh, how actually Acumetica integration uh, is working uh, with Beam uh, as well. Uh, Sam, uh, so I'll let you continue from here, and then I'll uh, take the screen back uh, when we uh, when it's time for us to address questions. Okay. Feel free to share your screen whenever you are ready. Thank sure. you. Sure. So, yes. I believe you see my screen now. Okay. Yes, perfectly. Great. Um, so thank you, Kevin, for your introduction and the beam overview. And also thank you for passing the mic to me. And in coming, I kind of showed you a, a short video, a short video that um, introducing the integration of uh, beam with Archimedes. So let's get started. So uh, you will see here, we are logging in into Archimedica. So um, under the fixed assets uh, fields, we add some new asset, saying the test fixed asset with some of the required information. Then you will see we save it and this asset is created in Archimedica. Then we will use a transfer tool here. And all the data will be transferred to BIM. So we log in in BIM. Then you will see the new asset has generated in BIM, or more precisely, it's transferred to BIM from Acumatica. Then we make it some change in the record in BIM. And going back to Acumatica's and in Archimedica, you will see the change. It shows here, which means the integration is a success. Okay. So, and I believe this also answer one of the questions in our chat box, like uh, how integration can be carried out between Beam and Archimedica. Then what you see on the, your screen is the dashboard after logging into our bis business, uh, I mean, our Beam Enterprise Asset Management System. So right here, you will see um, a dashboard on your home screen, and they are sizable. You can change the size and make, 
and you can add or delete the winches you need and also this winches winches is can interact with each other what does this mean like uh, considering on your top left this is all the location of your organization so when you once you click on either one of the location the data of other winches will change accordingly and this um all the winches providing the real-time data so you can keep a, a close eyes on your kpis or kpi perform of your performance or tracking right you log in into beam okay and on your top left there's a drop down main menu so you will see all your um, modules available in your in beam so let us go to the first one asset module and what i'm going to show you is the graphical assets tree and as kevin mentioned in his presentation so by uploading your blueprint or your four plant of your facilities or your um your plant you can pick point you can pick point um, the location of your asset or machinery when you move your cursor on the um, particular machinery you will see the information regarding this uh, equipment like uh, the name uh, the department where it's located and the status of this uh, equipment while it is in green color or in active which means it, uh, it is available in production or if it turned into red color, which means they are not able to carry out any production process. Also, you can click on it and get a quick access to create a maintenance order or request. Also showing all the activities history regarding this asset as well. Then we can come to a real map that BIM provides. It is a uh, Google map, which you can zoom in and out. And of course, we can pinpoint the location of your fixed asset here and or integrate with the GPS of your uh, equipment so you can get track of your moving uh, asset as well on this Google map. Then we will come to the asset function of asset module here. So here is where you can have all the record of your asset is showing all the information in a list with its uh, name, the code, the department where it is belonged to, and also who is um, the owner of that uh, asset as well. So we can click on this add button and choose the equipment type, which are configurable, uh, which means you can add or delete um, the equipment type so before I get into more information, I will go, I'm going to show you uh, SS3, which show the structure of your organization in a, a hierarchy form. But it also show the asset line relationship in this asset list. So uh, saying you need two equipment to complete a particular task, so um, right here. For example, you need a truck to um to take and a trailer to carry out the transportation activities. So you can um combine them and get uh we say a parents and children relationship here, and complete the task. Uh, if and if they are connected or combined, and anything make uh any change make on the parents, which means the upper layer, then the change will automatically apply to the lower layer as well. And as Kevin mentioned, this, we don't have the limit uh, in the layer of this SS3. So you can add as much as you want in this SS3. Then we go back to the asset list. So uh, let me get you a quick tour in here, in adding a new equipment. So what we need to fill is all the field with the asterisk. So uh, with the code, 
set 01 and the name saying uh, truck. Then we can have the status. And also we can choose the group and it is a truck. And where it is saying is uh, in Port Elizabeth. And uh, more information we can put is uh, like the serial number and the buying price in different currency, uh, say it's in USD and it is uh, $100, for example. And then uh, there's more information we can add. We uh, associate with this asset, like uh, the maintenance team, who gonna take care of the maintenance team, uh, the maintenance of this particular asset, say uh, the maintenance department. So we can track it and apply it. And also we can have um, the asset material, like, like uh, what we can do, uh, what material will we use. And also, okay, like the material as well, like the fuels will be used and the quantity. And also we can have some uh, legitimate information like insurance, uh, the vehicle inspection, and have the picture here, and any supporting document like um, the guideline menu or handbook, and have a uh, warranty information right here. Because uh, different assets got different warranty uh, policy, I believe. So right here, you can just associate or the most appropriate warranty to this um, asset. So once you're done, you can save it. So you can have your new asset here. But also, this asset list can integrate with Archimedica, which means you uh, BIM can pull the asset information from Archimedica. And any change made on BIM, it can send back to Archimedica uh, accordingly. And then um, the next is uh, I'm going to show you uh, Kevin said uh, BIM providing a 10,000 plus report. So here's I'm going to show you an, an idea that yes, BIM is providing a, a lot of type of report. And I'm going to show you SS status report, like uh, we can choose which asset we are targeting on, but if we leave it bank, which means all assets will be selected. And then we can get it prepared. And you see within um, our this location or in our company, there's 45 equipment is under uh, active status and two is in the passive, which means uh, no production can be performed by these two uh, equipment. And you can export this report into Excel, PDF, or even images like um, JPEG and share with this report with associate personnel. And not only you click and prepare the report um, by the time you need it, but you can also schedule the report um, to be sent to your, to your inbox. So right here, we got a schedule tape. And you can choose if the report uh, sent to you daily, weekly, or monthly, and when it's got prepared. Saying uh, we can change it to uh, every six in the morning, and then we can save the changes, and then the report will sent to send to the inbox, um, and for your review every six in the morning. Okay. Then we can go to the uh, maintenance module. So right here, we can get, you will see the work request function here is um, much more control or implement by the uh, operational level. So um, you, will, you will see all the work requests uh, is shown in this list with the information like the day is created, uh, what's the problem and the description and who created this request. And we can simply, we can click on the add button here and it will get you into a very detailed form to create a work request. 
which is, uh, you get the code, uh, asset code name, uh, I mean the asset code, the web type, failure code, a lot of the information here. But there is another way to get a fast request. It's right here. You will see the fast request button. You click on it. Then you will see there's a simplified form to help you to create a work request more rapidly. Saying uh, the truck we created, got a, we need a work request on it. And we can choose the work types saying uh, we need a cleaning. Then we, the failure to code, uh, cleaning the tank. And we can get more uh, supporting information on the request definition open box saying cleaning the tank also. And we can also attach some document like handbook, guideline, or any supporting document uh, to this work request. Then you can also choose the status, will it be, it is stop or it still continue, uh, it can also still performing production. Then we can save it. And you will see that your request is sh showed on the list right here. This is what we have just created. And then I'm going to take you to the work order. So all the work requests you, um, the employees or all the requests which is created by anyone, they will automatically pull to the work order list. So it's also showing you all the information when it's created, who and which equipment need associate um, appropriate work requests. And work order is where you make this work request come true, which means carry out or schedule a real maintenance order. Uh, besides having your work request, you can also you can click the app button and have the work order uh, generated directly. But since we have the work request created, so you can click on it and get schedule your work order. You will see on your top right, right here, you have the plan start day, which means uh, which day you are going to you schedule to have the maintenance activities saying uh, next Monday, and then it's go gonna last till um, next Tuesday. And we can change the time, say uh, 12 afternoon, and it start at um, eight in the morning on 17th, okay? And you will see there's um, a plan start date, and right here you got a start date and end date. These are the actual, uh, the start date and the end date when you're closing the closing the work order. So right now we are scheduling, so we can assign the person who gonna take care of this, and then uh, which material will be used for this material uh, for this maintenance. Saying um, right here, spare part one, and how uh, the quantity and the price, and if any. Uh, services needed um, from the third party, like the vendor, the subcontractor. So uh, we can um, define it right here and enter uh, the invoice number, say uh, QWER123, and the payment method, how many quantity of the service we, we need from this contractor, say uh, four, and you will see the unit price will um, pull out here automatically. So, and then you will see that the total cost will calculate by BIM and you don't have to fill it in uh, to minimize the human error. And more information can be uh, entered on the field on your left, like uh, attach uh, more documents, uh, like having the index measurement, like um, we will say the tire pressure maybe so we can choose the, uh, the standard value and the measure the menu we can enter right here. Saying uh, now we got four, saying so we can apply the change, and you will have a. It's helped you to keep uh, tracking of the index. For example, the meter reading, like the kilometer, and then you will see the cost associated with this uh, work order will be shown. So this $100 come from the service cost with which 
uh, we enter full quantity of the surveys needed. So it's come here and help you to have a better idea how much this maintenance activities is cost your company. So once you're done, you can save it. And if you remember, we planned our this work order on June 17th. So we can go to the work order calendar and go to June 17th right here. So you will see this is what we created, the truck cleaning. We can go to the, the truck cleaning from 17 to 18. And we can show the detail and you will see they are what we have just created. Yep, cleaning the tank and Anderson one take care of this uh, maintenance activities. So here, where we, that's what we just created. Okay. So let me go back to the calendar and you want, if you want to know how to create a preventive or periodic maintenance, then you have to go to the preventive maintenance under the maintenance modules. So we get the preventive maintenance de definition right here. So here is where you can schedule uh, the pre preventive or periodic maintenance. So right here, you will have the list and you will see all the record of the scheduling maintenance here. And is you will have um, the information of the last maintenance day and the next maintenance day to particular asset in this list. So we can add a new preventive maintenance scheduling saying um, also we take the example we just created like the truck and the maintenance failure code saying um, it's contract used it. Or we can do more precisely like mechanical failure. So right here, you can click the checkbox, uh, follow update. So you will be allowed to enter the maintenance period, which means um, saying 30 and we can choose the unit days. And then the next maintenance date will be 30 days after. So if we change to 60, you will see the next maintenance date will be updated to August 12th. I believe. Yep, there you go. And beside that, you can choose uh, the unit of measurement as day or week or month here. And more as well, more information can enter um, in the field on your left, like what material will be used, the maintenance plan, and any attached doc document needed and provide more uh, supporting or evidence to this or, or guideline to this um, maintenance activities. So you will see there's a, um, a friendly reminder pop up if we didn't fill in all the required field, which is also an advantage of BIM. So uh, we have to put in the work order type of uh, the work order kind and the work order type before we create this schedule. And the maintenance time saying uh, 60 minutes. Okay, and on your top right, right here, you can choose either we create the work order or don't create it. Um, why we have to don't create it? Because, uh, by, I mean, um, the work, the preventive maintenance may be uh, may not be available for any reason, like um, the weather or short of labor or any resources. So we can just do not create work order. But anyway, in this example, I will just create a work order. And another way you can create a work order um, of your scheduling is clicking the button right here. So you will see a create a new order, then we can click it. And you will see also a reminder saying it's added to the system. Then we can go back to the work order calendar and we go to August 12th. August 12, right here. This is where, uh, what we have just created. You will see right here. Okay. Then we can go 
to the next module, the materials module. So right here, you will see the material list here with the name, the material code, how uh, what's the last purchase price, and the average price, and the group it's belonged to. So um, we can click it and add a new material, and it's look similar to to the way uh, how we add the new asset. Same down here, zero zero one, and the material uh, name saying it is um um what's that like a gear or oh, the gear so it's come in piece and more information like a zero number iso code we got regarding this uh, new materials or the models the brand can be added here and we have uh, the equivalent uh, like what's the alternative uh, of these new ad materials because maybe it will out of stock or not available so we can have a good uh, better idea what can use it as a substitution so we said um, this material all fight is the equivalent of materials and we can attach the document like uh, guideline uh, instruction and handbook and we can add the picture of this gear, like uploading the picture. And this is the one of the best way to recognize or identical um, of to a particular material. So we can save it when it's done. And same as the assets list, these materials can um, can get from Art Archimedicus. So which means with the integration, we can take the material you have in Archimedicus and make the changes and then send back to Archimedicus and vice versa. So um, the transaction of the material, which means the in and out activities, should be frequently for your materials. So we can do it right here like uh, material incoming with material withdrawing and the material transfer, which means uh, is transport between two locations of your organization. So we can add the incoming material. So uh, which department is occurred, let's say Port Elizabeth and which warehouse, which material is gonna to be increased in quantity, saying the one we just created and that will be the BIM001, the gear. Okay, how many uh, pieces is going to get into the warehouse and the unit price saying uh, is $30 each. Okay, then when it's done, we can click it and you will see the total amount will be calculated automatically as well. And then we can save it and this Transaction will will be recorded in Beam. Okay. Then we go. We can go to the personnel module. So right here you will see the resources, which means the human resource and all the employees' um, information will be shown in this list. So you can get uh, more detailed information by clicking the build, and you can have the picture of the employees uh, which post uh, what position it he is at and um, what shift he, he has and the course of his um, the course of this um, personnel to performing production like uh, right here is 20 cents per minute so right here we're counting in minute but they are configurable they can be um, count uh, as a monthly, daily, hourly, and more personal information like uh, the address of these employees, um, education, um, and work experience, uh, citizenship, and birthday. If he has the card, all the uh, personal information can also um, be entered in these pages. Then we can go to the personnel modules and 
the that's resource occupation calendar so right here you can choose if you're target, targeting on someone you can choose right here and take it and call it so right here you will see the uh, schedule of particular employees so you can change the wheel from day week or month and another good thing I got to show you is you can click the plus button here and you can compare the schedule among the employee so we can go to saying that saying June 4th um, John and Bob got a um, got a task they gonna last from 12 to 11 to the afternoon so it's take them whole uh, half day so if you have any task performing on this day you can assign to um, an other available person like to Frank Larry or Michael instead to avoid any conflict um, of their task or assignment so um it's one second and the next I'm going to show you guys is this okay. uh, one second I'm going to show you the um, our mobile application that we have or available on so uh, you can carry out the same the same uh, function on your mobile application as you have on your web application so let me see if anyone see my screen I believe so okay so right here you can download the app mobile application on your Android or iOS device so you will see um, same asset just click on it and you will see the asset list and it's got the also got the information like the name and the asset code where it is and uh, which apartment is belonging to and also we can search it like um, search the description what we have created in our is a truck in the web application right so we filter it filter and it's loading now so we have our section yep and our truck is right here you see and also you can have your uh, work order and the work request manage on um, your um, mobile application here as well so um it's come to the end of my demonstration so um thank you everyone and thank, thank you Kevin. Sam. yes thank you very much great great demonstration Sam. thank you thank you thank you so uh let's address uh some of the questions that we have been receiving and then uh, we can end our, uh, our uh, webinar for today. Let me share my screen for kids. Okay. Sure. So right now we are in the Q&A session and we have been receiving some of the questions. For instance, uh, one of them was actually about the mobile app. If you have any, uh, Sam just uh, presented to you that we have a mobile app available. Works on Android and iOS devices. So you can simply download it on your device and you can use it as Sam demonstrated to you. So another one that I have received, let me see the list, uh, is the desktop wave. Okay, so if, if Beam is a desktop application, so Beam is in essence is a web-based application. It works on cloud, just like Acumatica. It, looks, it works on-premise servers, just like Acumatica. So once we deploy it on a, a cloud account or an on-premise server, you can simply access Beam from anywhere. So that is basically the answer of uh, this question. So another question that we have is list uploading a tool is available for mass input of data like SSP parts. Yes, of course. I mean, we have a, a pretty practical Excel sheet uh, uploading availability uh, capability in, in Beam. So any information, any data that you need to upload uh, in Maps, uh, for instance, 
uh, you can upload it. Could be a list of assets, could be a list of spare parts, for instance. You can upload it. The idea is that right now we have the Acumetica integration in place. So uh, if you are using Acumetica, then naturally you have your assets uh, and or at least you have your inventory in Acumetica, that's for sure. So we can simply pull up that information, pull up that data into into Beam. So that is the practical way of doing it with Acumetica. Uh, you know, in, in essence, uh, you can also upload it in into Beam, and you can send it to Acumetica as well. So that is uh, that is uh, possible. Uh, simply, most of the moments that we see in Beam, based on our experience and observation, is in the in the spare parts section. Because spare parts come, you can use them. You order more; they keep coming, they keep coming and going. Simply, uh, the asset moment is less. I mean, how many times you're gonna buy? How often you're gonna buy uh, machinery or equipment? The frequency is less than using spare parts naturally. So the uh, the uh, in terms of the beauty of interaction inter integration is uh, is that you'll see the benefits more in the in the spare part integration. However, asset integration is also available with Alchemetica to make things and operations uh, easier. Um, so yes, you can uh, also uh, upload. Uh, you can also uh, install. Beam in the same SQL instance with Acumetica, that's not a problem. If it is in a separate location, that's also okay. It's not a problem either. So that's uh, possible. Can we, another question that we have is that can we link the parts required to the POs in Acumetica? Yes, you can. So uh, right now what we have is simply pulling and pushing the data in the uh, spare part uh, management section in association with Acumetica. However, uh, let's say you set minimum and maximum level in Acumetica spare parts section. And let's say you are low, lower than you like to have in a certain gear or a spare part. For instance, a system can trigger an automatic uh, purchase order in Acumetica. So that is something that we can set it up pretty uh, quickly. So that's not a problem. So it all depends on what you like to have in your, uh, in your project simply. I mean, there are some you know, maintenance management teams. They like to keep things separate. They just want to integrate spare parts with Acumetica, for instance. That is a typical uh, integration that we have been doing. Some of them, they let more intense integration, uh, send in the maintenance costs uh, and expenses into Acumetica, for instance, or triggering purchase orders in Acumetica if we, have, if we are low in certain spare parts. So all these options are on the table and it's for you to decide and we'll uh, make it happen with our, with our Acumetica integration. Uh, let me see if I'm missing another uh, question. Um, so, okay, so we address the integration part with Beam and Acumetica. Um, so, so, yes, so um, one of the questions is that is, um, uh, can, can Beam handle the self-constructed assets? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by self-constructed assets. Uh, however, as long as there's, a, uh, there's an asset in the system, uh, you can handle it. You can. You just need to basically define it in the system. Either that information coming from Acumetica with the integration, or you can put it in Beam and can and Beam can send it to Acumetica. So any asset, as in machinery, equipment, units, uh, as in facility, uh, they can be managed in the in the system. In addition to those, uh, just like uh, Sam uh, demonstrated earlier, if you need to combine two assets to uh, to do a task, for instance or if they need to be combined for a while. A typical example would be a truck and a trailer. So simply you connect them to each other. However, in essence, they are uh, actually separate assets. So you can uh, manage them separately. And if you need to manage them uh, together, you can also link it uh, as uh, primary and uh, sub um, assets, for instance, uh, or typically a parent-child relationship is an example that uh, Sam has been using, so you can also think of it that way. That can also be linked in the in the system, and you can basically manage the assets uh, as, as combined assets uh, for a while. So uh, you can also get a report out of it as well. Let me see if I'm getting any other questions. Well, it uh, it looks like yes. So it looks like we address all the questions. It has been a, a pretty good uh, webinar, I believe. I hope you find it, you find it to be informative as well. I do. I would like to thank you for your time and for your interest for joining uh, this webinar as our attendees. Also, I'd like to thank again to Acumetica for this opportunity for us to present Beam uh, integrated with Acumetica. Uh, we, we much appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. 
and looking forward to seeing you in our uh, coming webinars. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. And uh, before we end, uh, please uh, see our contact information on the screen. So if you like to uh, if you like to continue this conversation, you can contact us contact us anytime you like. You can send us an email. You can give us a call. We'll be happy to uh, in touch with you and address uh, all your questions that you may have later on. Thank you and uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much.